Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. Uh, and today I want to talk about multiple cases again. This is a little follow up to the screencast that I gave last time, um, in which I showed you one of the techniques for getting around the lack of multiple cursors in Vim um, is to use a plugin like Scalpel. And it was pointed out to me um, in a couple of comments that I received that you can do something very like Scalpel with a single mapping. Um, and so what I want to do is show you that mapping today because it might be useful to you and also show you uh, why you still might want to use something like Scalpel. So um, the mapping in question is visible here on the right. Um, and so I'll just talk you through what it does. Uh, I've assigned it to C star. That's because the mnemonic here that I'm trying to go for is that it's going to be a change operation, hence the C. Um, and it's going to have semantics that are like the star operator. So um, as you may know, uh, the way the star operator works, um, I can go to a word somewhere in a buffer um, and hit star, and it will take me to the next match of the word under the cursor. Um, and it's the search pattern, so I can just keep hitting N to go to the next match from that point on. Um, so effectively, we're combining this notion of changing and then jumping to the, the word that is currently under the cursor. And the way we do this is uh, with star shift N. And the reason we do star shift N is because when you hit star, um, as I'll do now on this word here, um, you can see that I'm on the word four, I hit star, it actually jumps to the next occurrence of the word. When what I really want is to edit the word that is under the cursor at the time when I press the mapping. So we have to do shift N to jump back to where we were. And at that point we can use C, standard change command, and uh, GN is the motion. So if I do this manually, you'll see what happens. If I hit star and then shift N, I jump back. And if I do CGN, it'll put me in insert mode and I can change the word. I can leave insert mode, and if I hit dot, then I can repeat the operation. And so you'll see that the next instance of the word changed to foo. Um, I could also use N or Shift N to move back and forth through the, the list of matches, just like it would with any search. Um, now, the reason why you might like this is because you don't have to install another plugin, and also because, uh, well, I can't actually think of any other reason. Um, <laughs> it enables you to just use you know, built-in Vim things. Um, the reason why I personally don't really enjoy using this is because if I were to hit dot right now, I can't actually see on the screen what is going to be edited. So I'm, I'm going to do that for you. And you see that it jumped down here and, oh, that's the one I changed. I actually want to preview these changes before I make them. And the way you would do that with this mapping is to hit N so that you land on the mapping before you change it and then dot. So in that way, you could probably do N dot, N dot, N dot, and it get kind of the same effect. Um, but I prefer to use a plugin that just puts me straight into a kind of confirmation style loop. Um, another problem with that particular approach is it's going to pollute the jump list. So if I show you the jump list, you'll see all these places where I hit N to jump to are now on the jump list. Um, and if I do this in a large file, my jump list is going to get completely uh, flooded with these things. That might actually be what you want. You might actually want to be able to go back to all the places where you made substitutions or at least looked at things. Or on the flip side, you might not want that because uh, you want to keep a clean jump list. So once again, it's context dependent. So I'm going to put this file back the way it was and show you uh, a similar kind of operation using Scalpel. So with Scalpel, I would use literary to bring up this prompt that's going to enable me to put something different in. So I'm going to change four to foo. Um, and I get straight into this confirmation loop where I can say yes or no to any particular change. Um, and so I change all those. And anytime I can quit. So I quit. And then I look at the jump list. And I see that it is exactly as it was before. So this did not pollute the jump list in any way. And I was still able to preview the changes. Um, the other reason why you might want to use this is you could do fancy stuff with the regular expressions if you want. Um, I'm going to struggle to think of a, something fancy to do because I'm doing this live. Uh, but the point is this prompt that I'm writing in here is ultimately going to wind up as a substitute command that Vim itself runs. And this is a Vim regular expression. So I can do pretty much anything I want here, including doing things like look ahead, look behind, and or you know, use just standard regular expression syntax. So for example, I could basically change anything that is pro followed by two characters. I don't know what it's gonna find. Um, so it finds nothing at all. Because I don't know Vim regular expressions. Oh no, because I had the word boundary marker there. Um, actually, let me get rid of the word boundary markers and see what this thing finds. So it's gonna change that one, that one, that one. So this is something that you couldn't do with 
simple C star. Um, so that's scalpel versus the C star mapping. Um, use whichever one suits you best or use both um, because there's more than one way to skin a cat. So thanks for tuning in and I will be back again soon with another screencast on the theme of organization.